Okay, we're going to continue working with loops. This time we're going to create a class. We're going to call our class distance traveled. And in the distance traveled, we're going to have just a couple of variables. One for the speed and one for the number of hours. Uh, the speed is going to be miles per hour. Um, miles per hour, typically you've got 5 miles, 20 miles per hour. You don't really have half numbers. They're whole numbers. Um, so I'm going to store it as an integer. So I'm going to create my first private variable as an integer. I'm going to call it MPH for miles per hour. My next variable then will be for the number of hours. Now I could see where you you uh, travel an hour and a half. Uh, this program is only working with whole number hours um, in the examples, um, this particular program. So you could do it differently, but for this example, um, we're just going to assume that we're only traveling for one hour or two hours or three hours, whole number hours. Um, so that just depends on the situation. This situation says uh, whole number for hours. Um, then we can create accessors and mutators um, built into Eclipse. There's this nice sort of cheating, if you will, so you don't have to type the code. At this point, we should all know how to write the standard accessors and mutators. So to save time, we'll generate setters and getters for both of our variables and voila there they are so our two variables now have setters and getters afterwards it says it should have a method named get distance that returns the distance in miles the vehicle has traveled we should probably be more descriptive, call this the number of hours. So I'm going to have a public method that is going to return a value. It's going to be uh, one whole number times another whole number, which will result in an integer uh, called get distance. And get distance is not going to accept any parameters, but it is going to have to return a value. So it's going to return miles per hour times the number of hours. Num hour, singular, not plural. And because I changed my name of my variables, I need to reflect that in the methods that use that variable. There we go. So now these all have the same name. Passing it in. That's good. Get distance. Okay, so we have our class designed. Haven't had to deal with the loops yet. We're going to deal with the loops in the main method. So we need a driver. And so I will create a new class. Distance traveled driver. It's getting a little long, but I'm okay with it since it's going to work. And in here, it's a driver, so it's going to have the main method, and we're going to have a scanner. So let's do those two things. Public static void main string args. And so right away, we'll create our variables over here, int mph, num hours, similar variables that we created over there. We'll create our scanner.
How many hours did you travel? Num hours equals keyboard dot next int. Now we need to create an object. The object will be called the distance traveled. We're going to call this the distance to work equals new distance traveled. And we're going to do to work to set the hours. We're going to pass in the number of hours variable. System out print line How fast were you driving? Say MPH equals keyboard dot next int to work set miles per hour MPH Now we're going to demonstrate the class in a program that uses a loop to display the distance a vehicle has traveled for each hour of a time period specified by the user. I might have gotten ahead of myself. Go ahead and create another integer for the control equal to one. We're going to start control out at one. While control is less than or equal to the number of hours and you could use your object and get the hours too we're gonna say hour then tab and say distance traveled the first time through the loop will be print out the number one here so for hour one plus I said I got ahead of myself here because I need to set the hour to work dot set hour to the control so it's going to set the hour to hour one and we set the miles per hour so I actually this is where I got ahead of myself I actually don't need that at this point so we'll say hour one plus we're going to tab for our, and then say our distance traveled to work dot get distance so we're going to set the hours to hour one we're going 40 miles an hour and then we need to increment control And it's probably going to be a little um, formatting 
issues here the first time we run it. How many hours do we travel? We're just going to say three. How fast were you driving? 40. So each time it prints out hour one, you drove 40 miles. Hour two, you drove 80 miles. Hour three, you drove 120 miles. What you might do is take this out of the loop. And then we can comment out that line where I said I got ahead of myself. And this should work out a little bit better. Again, just formatting here. Run it. Don't forget your semicolons. I travel three hours, 40 miles an hour. Hour one, distance traveled, performs the math. So I didn't need to set the hours here because inside of the loop, we're changing the hours each time through the loop. The first time through the loop, we're setting the hour to one. Notice the control variable equals one. So we're setting the hour to one for the very first time. And then we do our calculation based on 40 miles an hour at one hour. The second time you increment it through, control goes to two. You still need the number of hours variable to create the condition for the loop. And let's even test it against a couple other different sets of numbers. So if I travel five hours at 100 miles an hour, There you go, you can even say to work get distance plus miles. So when we run it, if I travel for 10 hours, 50 miles an hour, there you go. Using a while loop with a distance traveled object and its associated methods.